Hey everybody, my name is Brian. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about ARP. ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. In today's video, I'm going to explain what ARP's for, and then I'm going to walk you through step by step how ARP works. Address Resolution Protocol is a protocol used to match an IP address with its corresponding MAC address on a local area network, also called a LAN. In this diagram, you see a local area network and a computer that wants to send a message to the computer that has the IP address 1.1.2.1, but does not have the corresponding MAC address. Probably wondering, what's the difference between an IP address and a MAC address? An IP address is a device's address that allows the device to transport packets from network to network via routers. An IP address cannot be used to transport data within the network, like a LAN. A MAC address is a unique physical address assigned and burned into the device's network interface card. A MAC address allows the device to transport data within a network. Now that you know what an IP address and a MAC address is and their differences, let's walk through step by step on how ARP works. First step of ARP is for the source device, or in this case, device A needs to check its cache to make sure it doesn't already have the corresponding MAC address of the IP address it wants to send a message to. Step two will include the source device, or in this case, device A will generate an ARP request message. In this message, device A will include both its IP address and MAC address. It will also include the destination's IP address, but will not include the MAC address since that's what it's looking for. This would be equivalent to device A saying, who has IP address 1.1.2.2? Step 3. Device A will send the ARP request message as a broadcast message. Broadcast meaning it will send it to every device in the local area network. In step 4, all the local devices will process this ARP request message. Only one will process this message and realize it has this IP address. The rest will just disregard the message. After processing the ARP request message, in step 5, the destination device, or device B, will generate an ARP reply message. This message will include device B's MAC address and IP address, sending it back to the device A's. It will also include device A's MAC address and IP address. Step 6, the destination device, or device B, will update its ARP cache since it now knows device A's IP address and MAC address. Step 7, the destination device, or device B, will send ARP reply message back to A. Step 8, the source device, or device A, will process this ARP reply message. Finally, in step 9, the source device, or device A, will update its ARP cache and include the MAC address of the destination device, device B. Both devices now have the appropriate addresses to send messages over a local area network. Now, I'm going to walk you through a simple animation and how to remember ARP step by step. In this example, I'm going to refer to IP addresses as names and MAC addresses as physical looks. Matt, on the right, wants to talk to Brian, but has no idea what he looks like. So, he's going to check his memory, aka his ARP cache, and see if he remembers what he looks like at all. Since Matt has no idea what Brian looks like, he's now going to ask the crowd, which one of you is Brian? My name is Matt. This is very similar to our ARP request message. As you can see, all the crowd except for Brian ignored this message. Brian replied saying, hey, I'm Brian. This is very similar to an ARP reply message. Now, Matt and Brian both know what each other looks like. They can now converse and talk to each other. This is very similar to knowing both MAC addresses.
so they can talk over a local area network. I hope you now understand address resolution protocol a little bit better. Thank you.